I think it's really important when good things happen in our lives and good things happen in our careers to make sure that we're also proud of those things and we don't hold back and, and talk about the joy and the satisfaction you get when you've achieved something that you think is important to you and hopefully important to those that are around you. And this week marks one of the biggest milestones in my career. I was named by the Puget Sound Business Journal to their 40 under 40 class for 2020. And I'm so honored by this. And the thing that it made me really think about is, you know, how did I get here? And, and to really reflect about a career that started many years ago that took certain paths, which I was really fortunate to take because I was laser focused on what I wanted to do. And it didn't really actually happen naturally, right, in terms of growing up and, and coming from a, an immigrant family and coming to the United States at eight years old. When you arrive in the United States, it's, it's the equivalent of winning the lottery. You know, for many immigrant families, it's really an opportunity, and I still believe that to this day, to really do anything you want and to really achieve something great. And when you come to the United States, there's a pressure as, as an immigrant to do certain things, certain things that lead to success and to not be so risky in the approach that you take, but to take a proven path. Things like becoming a doctor or a lawyer or a computer science engineer, those were the paths that many people have when they come to the United States from their parents or from their family members because that was the definition of success for them growing up. And so for me growing up, I had the same pressure. I have an amazing family and, and they really wanted me to succeed. But what I realized early on is that's not my passion. And I think that for anybody to have a really successful and fulfilling and, and happy type of career, you really need to be passionate about what you're doing. And, and I strongly believe that. So at the University of Washington, I took the approach of, I went there telling my parents I was going to be a lawyer. But within my first quarter, the classes I was most interested in were my comparative literature classes, were my cinema study courses that I first took just as a what I thought would be an easy elective to take. And what I was drawn to was the storytelling and that compelling uh, ability to use words, use imagery, and use visual to tell a story and to, to make somebody feel something. And, and I knew that was my passion. So naturally, I started reflecting about my career and the different milestones that were supported by some incredible mentors. It's really a path that I took early on that helped me get to where I am today. So I'm hoping to help you with an analogy that can help you today in your career and as you look forward in your career outlook. So think of the business world as a racetrack, and we're all race cars on it, with a pace car up front that's limiting our progress. It might be intended to be positive so we don't crash into each other, but it's limiting our individuality and our ability to leapfrog the competition and advance forward. I've been so lucky that I was able to identify my pace cars early on. And those were the pressures that were on me to be something maybe that I'm not in order to be successful. Lawyers have an amazing career. Doctors have an incredible career. But that's not something I wanted to do. I wanted to be in the arts. I wanted to do something creative. So by knowing that early on, I made sure that when somebody told me what I should do, I always went back to that North Star and knew who I was as a person. And I made sure that that pace car didn't inhibit my progress. So that was one key step is identifying what is the limiting factor? What is the pace car? More importantly is who's my pit crew? Who's gonna help me throughout my career? So I've had some amazing mentors that I've been able to bounce ideas off. Some of them didn't start as mentors. So I want you to think about maybe managers that drive you crazy because of their attention to detail. I had an amazing mentor for my first manager at Microsoft named Martin Clavijo, and his maniacal attention to detail drove me insane. Many of my friends started knowing him on a first name basis because I would talk about it at parties, I would talk about it on phone calls, but that attention to detail has driven me forward in so many ways. I've been complimented for it. All of my work has a certain level of polish. And it all started by having one manager that wouldn't take anything less than perfect as good enough. He wanted me to drive for perfection that even though I would never really achieve it, it the product would be so much better.
So he was an essential person in my pit crew. There are so many other names, so many different people like Christine Boyle that I had that came into my life at a time when I thought I wanted to just be an expert digital marketer. And she, she helped me see a bigger picture. She wanted me to see how marketing departments ran, how they interfaced with management, how they worked with human resources. And while I thought she really didn't know what I was and what I wanted to do, taking her advice and applying it into who I am as a person, which was a storyteller, a digital marketer, has helped me advance in my career much further than I would have had if I was just a niche expert at one particular aspect of digital marketing. So that pit crew has really helped me in my career. And it's really something that has helped me propel forward and in a place where I can have a sounding board and someone I can celebrate with and someone that I can talk through challenges with. So I want you to identify your pit crew as a second step after you understand what might be a pay scar in your personal or in your professional life. Lastly, but most importantly, is understanding that you don't want to be on the racetrack. By removing the pace car, by having a pit crew to support you, you're now able to be who you are, to be that person, to leverage that for your personal brand, to strengthen who you are, to find people that you respect, to build up, to be part of that mentorship group, to be part of your support group. And now you're ready to hit the open road, fully optimized and ready to take on the world. I hope this has been really helpful for you because it was really the key factor in my career to really make me very satisfied with my career, fulfilled with my career, and hopefully making an impact for you. The Brand Transformers podcast is brought to you by Envijo, where brand science means creating vision. Every brand has a story. We're here to help you tell it.